god. This video brings me down. It's almost like I have despair. Now imagine if my mood was dread or even hate. Wouldn't that have been a mood swing? But alas, week six of the incarnate weapons are finally here. And it's the last week of the rotation, which means all weapons have finally been seen and broken down by every content creator and their grandmother's milkman. So how is the despair? Well, let's have a little look into it and break down what you need to know. Yeah, as always, timestamps are added within the video. Where do you get the incarnate from? The very paradox on your navigation and make sure you are on the steel path version. Then you'll be wanting to do the circuit missions available on the left hand side. There are two out of five weekly rotating incarnate weapons to grab over a six week span. This week, despair is available to get. What does the evolve shot look like? From a quick, accurate throw-in weapon into what could be considered a pocket shotgun, the despair loses quite a lot of accuracy but gains a lot of damage, whilst adding a delayed AoE explosion to your daggers, creating fantastic quality of life and a small nuke potential. The incarnate shot also provides heat damage as well. What evolution should you take? Evolution 1. This is always provided for you. Give it a quick read because this will be the way to help you evolve your weapon into its incarnate form. Evolution 2. Increase your damage by 50 and gain 40% increased damage per status type affecting the enemy. Or increase your damage by 60, but with Stalker's other weapons, Dread and Hate equipped, multi-shot consumes ammo directly from capacity and increases your damage by 100%. This also has a 30% increase to your multi-shot as well. So between these two options, the first option has very little downside. Overall, it buffs damage when you consider being in a team or even playing in public or even warframes applying status elements to enemies so you only but benefit it's a great perk to always consider regardless as for stalker's vendetta it's for matic to run in his entire weapon loadout so this is rather niche if you want to take it then just remember that the other weapons have to be equipped as well however i would personally say that for evolved incarnate weapons that don't have a lot of incarnate charge shots to put out that this perk converting multi-shot from your ammo is not really the best quality of life sure you will do more damage but you will be in a constant state of evolving more often than you already are. It's a niche perk as I mentioned earlier. For now, I'm going to go with the first option as there is no real downsides to the selection. The evolution free. 30% less soon when aiming down sights, a 50% increase to your projectile speed, or a 100% increase to your reload speed. So these options are all quality of life. I'm just going to say right now, choose whatever you want. The third option is great for the non-incarnate state. It provides a reload double as fast. Plus, it actually helps you evolve your weapon faster. So it was my choice of selection out of this tier's choices. And finally, evolution four. Increase status by 24%. Increase critical and status by 12% or increase critical chance by 18% and critical multiplier by 40%. So these options matter more on how you want to modify the build of the weapon. It should be self-explanatory that if you need status, go for the status route. If you need critical, go for the critical route and so forth and so forth. Now, as I tested this weapon, I thought the damage AOE it provided was good and it just needed more of a bump to help it hit harder. I stayed into the critical route and I took the last option to really hit enemies like a truck. What build should you take? Now with those selections in mind, I complemented my build with a critical room, and I would specifically note that I wasn't 100% sure about the final build path because there was honestly quite a few of them that could work just as well as what I've got here. But for now, I settled with the basics. The damage came from my Evolution 2 choice, and it also comes from the Arcane that I took. Multi-shot is always arguably one of the best in slots for weapon damage output. Critical mods give you more bang for your buck, but I added in the Crosshair mod since it paired well with the Arcane. Cane. It also paired well with the 100 accuracy that we have innately within this weapon, and it also paired well with the idea of getting the incarnate from required from headshots. So I would basically build all of these passives up and these actives, and then I would switch over into my incarnate form with all of the bonuses were provided, and then just unleash damage. For the faction mod, honestly, I just use this for extra multiplicative damage, and although there could be double dipping if Slash did go and apply, uh, it's honestly the one that you could go and replace here if you so chose to. Elemental mods corrosive seem to be better for that one hit bang that we're looking for otherwise if your armor stripping a viral route might actually work a bit better especially when you pair it with the innate heat provided on its incarnate shots and so the riven guys i've rolled this way too many times to care anymore i wanted multi shot with critical damage or even potentially critical chance to give it really as much bonus damage per shot as possible unfortunately i couldn't really get the rolls that i wanted so i stuck with this for now and although it's good it's not what i had in mind for this particular build path. As for the arcanes, 
I would recommend either Deadheads, Merciless, or Flare if you're looking for general damage increase. Some others like Cascadia Accuracy, Overcharge, and Kinship also work well for this build path if you choose to select them. And for the Exilus shot, I personally felt like the projectile speed was best in slot. So that's how I topped off and finished my build as such. So there you have it. One of three Stalker weapons has its incarnate form, and we've got that covered in today's video. This week for the weapons on paper looked really interesting, but reality, word through the grapevine, has provided us with a bit of a lackluster week. The Despair, however, seems to be one of the better choices with everything considered. So I would recommend this as your go-to weapon for week six. But anyways, what other weapons did you guys take and how are they performing for you? Do you like them? Let me know inside the comments section. And if you guys are ever interested, I have a lot of the previous week's weapons in a playlist available if you ever need to go back and check them out and see what else there was for you to go ahead and grab. But as always, guys, thank you for checking out today's video. I'm tired. Goodbye.